I feel like the concussion kidnapped me and returned me back looking the same, but I have completely changed inside. I've been playing hockey for 15 years, but since returning to the game, I can only focus and concentrate on the fear of experiencing another concussion. It has affected the way I play every shift and now is translated into negative emotional and behavioral control off the ice, which really scares me. These are personal accounts from individuals suffering from psychological aspects from their concussions before they went through the biofeedback intervention. A concussion is a functional injury that can cause displacement or disconnection that can be seen as metabolic changes in the brain. Each individual reacts to a concussion differently, making no two concussions alike. This makes it difficult to treat and rehabilitate. Furthermore, there is no method for a hard diagnosis. You may have recently seen the movie Concussion or read media reports about athletes struggling psychologically that had a history of concussions. In the film, retired athletes are struggling with psychological issues and diseases like CTE that became so unmanageable that suicide sadly became the final outcome. This is not just a movie script. This is a reality for many who have suffered repeated blows to the head. This type of injury has the ability to change many aspects of your life through physical and psychological symptoms to the point where you don't even know or recognize the person you have become, but you look physically healthy on the outside. A concussion is a brain injury that is defined as a complex pathophysiological process affecting the brain induced by biomechanical forces. This definition interests me in the link between concussions and the potential of biofeedback as a tool to assist in psychological recovery. Examining the benefits of biofeedback, it became clear that if a concussion has the ability to change the functional processing of how the body and brain communicate, then biofeedback could be a positive tool in correcting the functional change caused by a concussion. A concussion injury results from, ra from a rapid front-to-back, side-to-side movement causing bruising on the brain, or a rotational movement that causes shearing on the brain within the skull. Such rapid movement can result in damage or disruption to how the brain functions, altering communication within the body and brain. With that being said, the majority of the population will recover from a concussion within a few days or a week. However, a shocking one in five will struggle with prolonged symptoms that can last for weeks, months, years, and in some cases, a lifetime. For the unlucky ones who experience prolonged symptoms, the dominant effects are often psychological. After graduating with a sport management degree, I spent the next 12 years working with and around some of the best athletes in the world. Unfortunately, these athletes, due to the nature of their sport, experience negative effects from their sports-related concussion or concussions. Through my relationship with these athletes, pre and post injury, it was evident that the psychological toll recovering from a concussion can have a profound long-term negative effect well after the physical symptoms have subsided. I witnessed firsthand the change in emotional control, behavior, cognitive ability, and confidence within and outside of the sport. It was these experiences combined with my passion for sports psychology that propelled me to resign from my job in Vancouver three years ago to this day and return home to Winnipeg. My master's thesis in sports psychology at the University of Manitoba focused on the psychological recovery from sports-related concussions. For many generations, the athlete was told to shake it off, tough it out, and with rest, the concussion would heal itself. But athletes are active people with active minds and bodies that want to be proactive in their recovery to regain full health. Athletes are people who perform for their peers, their families, their schools, their communities, their cities, and even countries. Very little about their lives are invisible or silent. However, when faced with recovering from a sports-related concussion, the silence and invisible nature of the injury can have a profound negative effect. The moment a serious athlete can play no more due to their concussion is where our serious work begins. A focus of my master's thesis was to eliminate the silence and invisibility during concussion recovery as a result of the functional effects and environmental factors post-injury. Silence has the ability to prolong suffering, intense negative thought, and even induce depression. A person post-concussion is often left in silence and vulnerable to these effects. This can be caused by a drastic change in lifestyle as a result of the concussion. 
For example, typical protocol when healing from a concussion includes mandatory rest, which is essential for all injuries. However, unlike any other injuries during recovery, it's limiting of screen time, reading, minimizing social interaction, decreased participation in school, and the hardest for athletes, being removed from the team dynamic. Their lives have been radically changed, and individuals are then left to process and understand their new reality with no solid tools on how to manage it. Athletes will often distance themselves from their friends, their family, and team when those dynamics is what they need most. My early exposure to biofeedback fascinated me. Although unrelated to concussions, I saw how it could be a tool to control physiology within the body and brain. I began to understand how biofeedback works and its benefits to those dealing with stress, anxiety, headaches, depression, drug addiction, learning difficulties, fatigue, focus, and concentration. It was then that it hit me. All these symptoms can be associated with concussions. Biofeedback is the process of using a variety of instruments that sense activity in the heart, muscles, and on the skin and brain, as well as the respiratory and circulatory system. These tools range from electrocardiograms to simple thermometers. The information in real time to the participants and the data obtained from biofeedback is analyzed to provide information about how the individual's body and brain work, hence the term bio and feedback. We gather information from our physiology and use that information to determine how we can control our emotions, feelings, and ultimately our behavior. Even with the invisible nature of the injury, biofeedback allows these individuals to see how their physiology works and reacts. This technique allows individuals to develop strategies to control bodily outputs associated with their physiology. By developing control at the physiological level, we can allow for positive messaging to the brain. Our body and brain are in constant communication, and in fact, research is beginning to show that more information goes from our hearts to our brain than from our brain to our heart. Traditionally, the study of communication pathways between the brain and heart has been one-sided, with the focus primarily on how the heart responds to commands from the brain. Yet research has shown that messages of the heart sense the brain can also affect outcomes positively or negatively. This was a major breakthrough. It had been assumed that the brain was dominant in controlling communication in our bodies. Biofeedback, though, has shown that we essentially have a second brain located in our heart. And if we learn how to control the heart, we can provide a positive line of communication to our brain. Research in this new discipline of neurocardiology shows that the heart is a sensory organ and a sophisticated center for receiving and processing information. The nervous system within the heart, or essentially the heart's brain, enables us to learn, remember, and make functional decisions independent of the brain. Furthermore, numerous experiments have come out recently that have demonstrated the signals the heart continually sends to the brain influence the function of the brain involved in perception, cognition, and emotional processing. Essentially, biofeedback can teach the heart how to effectively communicate to the brain. The biofeedback intervention included a stress test. I wanted these athletes to see how their physiology reacted when subjected to an adverse stimulus. I created a two-minute video of several concussion-causing hits to heavy metal music. The change in the individual's physiology was immediate. The participants observed their physiology on the biofeedback screen with their muscles getting tense, increase in heart rate, spike in skin conductance, and a rapid respiration rate. This led to the participants to feel stressed, anxious, tense, tense and emotionally volatile. These were the same reactions as those recorded in the pre-focus groups of the concussed athletes returning to sport or hockey, or grappling with the new dynamics in their everyday life. Participants learn to control their physiology, enabling them to see the change, showing them how to control and heal themselves. Getting participants to better understand what is physically happening within their bodies and how it affects their mental state is a positive step in, in towards eliminating the invisible nature of a concussion. The biofeedback training component consisted of breathing at six breaths per minute over a period of 20 minutes, while learning how to control muscle tension, skin conductance, respiration rate, and heart rate. 
Every five minutes, a new challenge appeared on the screen. For example, participants were able to keep their physiology in control for a period of time. A green light would turn on, music would start playing, a windmill would start to turn, or a golf ball would go into the hole. An important step in my research was the organization of focus groups. Athletes aren't known for being verbose or candid when expressing psychological struggles. But this method enabled them to generate confidence and provide emotional depth. The silence, the silence for the participants was eliminated, allowing them to come together discussing the trials and tribulations of their struggles after one or multiple concussions. For many, it was the first time they had aired their psychological difficulties, challenges, and pain that the concussion brought. Instant relief from the isolation was observed as participants enjoyed the community of others who were going through a similar experience. Sports requires confidence, and a group setting helps many athletes regain what was lost in the wake of a physical, psychological, and lifestyle upheaval. Creating opportunities for dialogue allows peer communication and helps increase confidence by sharing struggles faced every day by concussion sufferers. Through this intervention, I witnessed these struggles were now an immense weight lifted off the shoulders of the participants. They did not feel alone anymore. I personally noted the participants hugged each other and became visually relieved to have put the struggles past them. The support they provided for one another was tremendously powerful. The post-intervention focus groups and the biofeedback data indicated positive psychological change and the ability to control physiology after three stress tests and the biofeedback training was complete. Science tells us that when we are under pressure, anxiety, and stress, we are wired to emotionally respond first and think second. But our ability to manage our emotional state under pressure, anxiety, and stress during demanding conditions is really what can assist in negative recovery and turn it into a positive one. Incorporating focus groups and biofeedback training teaches athletes powerful techniques to balance their anatomic nervous system and control their emotional state when returning to life or sport after a concussion. Focus groups and biofeedback training can provide alternatives to antidepressants, sleeping pills, pain pills, drugs, and alcohol that unfortunately many athletes resort to. Focus groups and biofeedback positively assisted individuals working through depression, stress, anxiety, loss of confidence, fear, and anger that trigger self-medication. Furthermore, I believe concussions need to be managed by a specializing medical doctor incorporating a multidisciplinary approach to rehabilitation. The role of a sports psychologist should be a vital part of that multidisciplinary approach to have the greatest chance of successful recovery. Let's provide positive tools to these athletes for a safe and healthy recovery. Athletes deserve the opportunity to be the people they were before staying in a concussion so they can lead a healthy, positive life moving forward. Thank you.